today's episode of Zula Pillow Talk, I have here with me a very special guest. Hi, Narelle. Hello. Welcome to my bed. <laughs> yeah, we're plumped on her bed, really comfy with Twiggy, her long head chihuahua. Yes. <laughs> so, Nara, I heard that you have a new single out. I do. Yes, tell us more about it, please. Uh, <laughs> this is my first single, mm-hmm. I would say. First proper single. Yeah. And um, I've been wanting to put out music for a while, and I've been trying to write, and with that also facing a lot of, like, internal issues. Um, but it was, it was a good process, and then I kind of, like finally spammed like a two-week session thing and out of my head was the song that I was like okay this has to come out first like I don't know why but yeah so because uh, out of my head is like it's it's how what I feel I don't know can I say that like my it's like I feel like my dick is out you know <laughs> yes you can yeah say that. okay <laughs> like it's like sometimes when you go online and like social media and then every and, and especially doing it for a while, like, yeah. everyone is always about, like, oh, look at this life and blah, blah. And I know yeah. I buy into it as well. Yeah. Like, it's easy because, you know, it's, it's easier to show the nicer parts of your life and then you yeah. don't know how much of your crappy life to show. And then that started seeping into me. Like, I started feeling like, oh, no, like, I, I want to be more genuine. But then I don't know how, you know, how do you yeah. start once you've already done this for a yeah. long time and you've created this world yes. online? Yes, we used to it already. Yeah, so... I maybe it's like the Libra in me, but I was like, okay, if I'm gonna put a song out, I have to put the ugliest side of me out first. So out of my head is actually the worst part. Is it the me. worst part? I think so because that I mean it was definitely written. I mean I wrote all my songs about sweet for <laughs> about emotion, <laughs> um, different emotions that yeah. I was feeling through this like kind of weird phase of my life. Okay. So out of my head is like, is me being indulgent into bad behavior into toxicity is about me being childish and like throwing a tantrum but at the same time it's so real and and it was a it was it is a part of my life and i had to acknowledge that yeah i feel so that's dick out (laughs) out of my head yeah but it's doing really well i'm hearing it everywhere really yeah including in her room by the way (laughs) when we played google (laughs) we started playing and they were like next (laughs) google's actually my master yeah (laughs) Um, yeah, I feel bad sometimes because I'm like, oh, it's a nice sunny day. I'm so sorry I have to play this all this anger and angst. But no, actually, it doesn't sound so angsty to really? me. Yeah, it sounds like very catchy and like, um, it sounds more like um, just, you know, like, oh, I, I, I can't get you, you know, like yeah, the Kylie yeah, Minogue part, yeah, but yeah. not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, Interesting. It doesn't, it doesn't feel very heavy. That's, but does it feel like a little bit sinister? A little, especially okay. with the visual, because I went to watch your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's very, very aesthetic. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to just create, I guess, the vibe of like how I felt in the song. Yeah. What the song is, to me at least. It was cool. It was fun. Uh, the director is actually May. You know May, right? Max May. Yeah. Yeah, so it was really cool because I think... Oh, sorry. <laughs> like the two of us, like we, we, we don't hang out that much. But mm-hmm. every time we bond, we bond over, I guess, like... Being Xiao Zha Bo, I call her, I was like, hey, you have to direct a video because, like, it's a Xiao Zha Bo video and, like, you know, you know. <laughs> it's like, so yeah, cute. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I knew, like, I didn't have to explain to her the mm. emotion. And I think, I mean, I'm not saying that all girls feel that way, but um, I think being, feeling crazy is something that we do feel because we are emotional. Yeah, definitely. And, and it's also exacerbated, I guess, by the environment. Like, yeah. you know, feeling like you, maybe you have to present a certain persona or you can't f- flip out. And like, a lot of it was actually pulled from like, I did madness in literature like last time in school. So there's this uh-huh. book called uh, White Sag Associ that I just died for because I was like, oh my God, damn real. <laughs> have, you, have you read it before? No, I, do, I a, don't read that much anymore. I read I know, like 9 Gag and Instagram captions. <laughs> 9 Gag girl. I've been on 9 Gag for like 12 years. Oh, as in like you've been looking at their stuff for 12 years. Yeah. I didn't know they were around for that long. Yeah. 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 So like what actually inspired the, the song and also um, actually you have a whole album coming out, right? Yeah. Yeah, when is that coming out? Uh, it's... Is it a secret? Coming? No, it's not a secret. Okay. It's just that like I need to finish them. Ah. <laughs> and, like, I don't know how long it's going to take. It's quite funny because I wrote um, all the songs in one shot. Yeah. And it was only later where I started to like look at the songs and I was just writing each song based on like, okay, today we go in the studio, how do I feel? And okay, like there were a couple of like 
stuff I mean I actually did quite a lot of research like, before that. I like wrote down all these different like poems or whatever things that I felt like notes things that I've talked to my friends about and then I would just like I just started putting those into songs because to me I guess this journey was a bit of like self-therapy yeah it was like the what I thought was the end of self-therapy but now I realize it's actually still the start <laughs> Well, I think that's great actually that you have an outlet to express all these emotions yeah, into. Yeah, but the funny thing is that it's not like I've been... I mean, I have been songwriting like with the band and yeah. everything, but it's not like I've been doing this... You know, like some people be like, oh, I've been writing songs since I was five. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I actually <laughs> didn't and I... I... Writing things that were personal was kind of a new journey into songs. Like, right. Yeah, which was... I mean, it was fun. Yeah. But then, but then when I wrote all the songs, I looked at it and I kind of realised that all the... Everything I'd written up to that point was... I guess my process of getting over like a traumatic experience. Okay. Yeah. For me, it was like a toxic relationship, but it not it wasn't just a relationship. It was kind of like, um, I guess like gr- growing up. Like one was graduating from school and like kept having to face the adult world and realizing maybe like I did not have as much work experience as I wanted, and I was yeah. like daunted with the, my whole life ahead of me. Yeah. So it was. I mean, it was a necessary period. I think most people do go through that. Like, I definitely. How old are you? Huh? I'm oh, twenty. I'm twenty six, turning twenty seven. How about uh, you? I'm twenty five, turning twenty six. Oh, okay, I'm you're just a little bit younger <laughs> yeah. than me. I think. I think we all feel that way at right? some point. Right at twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. Like a lot of my friends come to me and they're like, "Oh, I'm feeling this," and they're trying. I'm like, "Yeah." I felt that like yes. actually my whole life, or like oh, you know, like <laughs> what's going on? You know, you're just I know, trying to me figure too. it out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always lost. But it's so cool that you know at twenty five you have like your own album coming out and like mm. you know a single and actually um. Like, can you tell us more about the traumatic experience or, like, what um, was... I, I'm just, I'm just going to assume, okay, that it's about relationships. Can't get you out of my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, secret. Didn't give... No, it's, like, right there. Like, yeah. Bleh. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. me. That's her dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was toxic. It was... I mean, it definitely was toxic. Yeah. Um, because... We both loved each other a lot, but we neither of us really knew how to be an adult. But we thought we were. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're at the age where we're kind of working. We've been working for a while. We're making enough money. Like, you know, you think like, oh, everyone around me is getting their life together. Like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the ball. But then yeah. that tricks you because you're really not. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess the toxicity started off fun. Like, for example, like at the start, you know, it would be playful things like mm-hmm. A, like, I don't want you to meet your friends today. Like, hang out with me. Then you're like, oh, it's so cute. Love you, love you. Oh, <laughs> and then, like, okay. okay, cool. So you spend your day at home, like, like mm-hmm. watching shows or whatever. And yeah. then, but then that drags on. And then after a while, it's like, you know, you're like three, four months in, and you still say, no, I don't want you to meet your friends. I want you to hang out with me. And then at that point, you, that that's where it starts to become toxic because yeah. you deny them of having a life of their own. But we didn't realize that. We thought that we were just in love, like so in love, and wanted to spend yeah. every second together. But I mean, that definitely snowballed into a lot more issues especially um being creatives and also you know (laughs) having creative control over each other like and and at the same time i think a lot of toxicity came from like insecurities i mean that's what that's what indulgence is to me like this song is about indulgence into toxic behavior and indulgence is basically you running is the antithesis to self-nurturance is you running away from something that you're not willing to face about yourself like I don't know, like being alone. I, and I realise I have that habit. Like, anytime I, I feel scared or insecure, I will like <gasps> turn, turn to someone just to hold them and be like, hey, hi, you know, hi, love me. And that's exactly what I did through the whole relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, I would use him to, so that I didn't have to think about everything that I did not like. But that means also not being able to grow as a person. Because yeah. you have to face the things that scare you, whether it's like failing at an exam or like, you know, like, screwing up on stage. Or, like, I come back from a gig and I feel like I did very badly and I just want to run home and forget. You and know, have like, someone... Let's eat McDonald's and watch TV and just cuddle. Yeah. Like. <laughs> oh, you really hit the nail on the head. Yeah, yeah. I feel that a lot of um, girls feel that way, especially. Not saying yeah. that guys don't, but girls tend to be a bit more emotionally dependent on... But that's also, others. I think, a product of, like, Singapore. I mean, I don't know how your family is, but my family is still quite male, heavy. Like, my grandma, you know, they're still, she'd still tell me things like, why you work? working, you know, to find a boyfriend, get married, oh. like, yeah, and so growing up, that definitely did seep, it does, it does seep, and I, and I, well, you know, when the whole feminism wave came about, I was like, I don't really get it, oh. and then finally one day, it like hit me like a truck, and I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, I've been gaslighting myself, <laughs> like, of course this is a real thing, how, and we were so 
deep in that we, we didn't even realize that we were not given the opportunity just because for example your parents tell you it's okay whereas my dad would tell ben like you know you need to work hard you need to provide for the family yeah but with me he's just like oh yeah it's fine don't worry like you know do your thing yeah i guess some girls just look at it as like a easy way out of life and they don't it, it like, was like, like for me, it is kind of i never wanted to get a job i mean not that i didn't want to work but to me in my mind the job for a woman was to be a mom and i always wanted yeah. to be a mom i still want to be a mom yeah. and i know i will do the job well yeah. but it's like you can do more than that if you want to no definitely yeah. Yeah. so it, it was also about like finding i guess i mean lately for me it's about finding what that means to me and what do i want because i hadn't been planning this since i was a kid like i need to start planning it now so <laughs> actually when like would you decide that you want to do this Still deciding. <laughs> still deciding. Okay. Every day, still deciding. Let, let the album decide for you, right? Like after already. Well, I mean, out. that's. I mean, no, but that's exactly why I want to do this because I'm. I'm always kind of like one foot in the door kind of person, um, and I'm a very easy quitter. So me coming into doing this album was to make a commitment, not just to myself, but to the fans or yeah. to the public, whatever that means. That mm-hmm. I'm doing this. I make a commitment to my company. Like, trust in me. Like, I'm gonna complete this project. So. For me, embarking on this is like, really, like I was saying, like therapy because I want to fix. For me to do this the way that I want to do it, I have to be the person that I want to be. So it's a little give bit me, selfish. Give me, give, me, give me a second to register that. Can you, can you just, for the sake of me and the audience, <laughs> repeat that again? For, what did I say? For me to want to do this, okay. to do this whole artist project yes. the way that I want it to be uh-huh. done, I have to be the person that I want to be. Ah, yeah, okay. Meaning like really, you have no choice. Face, face your flaws. I really like how you are so um, so self-aware of like the things that you are not happy with in your life mm. and you want to change, you want to improve and just want to like grow and evolve. Yeah. yeah, and sort of like making that kind of like growth available to your fans in, via your music. Which I'm, tr- I'm trying to, I think that's, that's the goal with this album is also to, to teach me how to communicate because I'm not very good at opening up to people like they always say like I have a very big strong wall and I'm like no I want to tear it down because in, in honesty I'm I'm quite chill like I, I like to talk to people I like to form bonds and connections but then sometimes when you know like get all these media things it's, it's hard because yeah. when do you spill your guts and when are you supposed to be you know chill and yeah. like professional about it I'm like what? well now is your opportunity <laughs> to just like really let it flow I also know. yeah I mean it's a process but also I mean the one thing that I've always loved about this career is the ability to connect with people. Definitely, I think you do that through your music. And yeah, also, awesome. now that you are like... Actually, I, I'm following you on Instagram, right? Yeah. yeah, and then I see you sometimes like posting like thought posts. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I, I notice that it's not that regular, yeah. but you, you do. And like it's pro- probably part of your efforts to yeah, open slowly, up more yeah. and like connect with people. Yeah. Even if, yeah, sorry. But other than that, you're, you're quite um, private, I would say, for a public figure. Like, you, you're not the kind who literally updates, like, whatever you're doing on a day-to-day basis. So, okay, actually, I, I really used to be like that. But then, I think in my career, I've come across a couple of people that have told me to shut up. <gasps> yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's a real thing. Like, it was, uh, it, it was actually an ex-manager who likes it. You know, he sounds stupid. Like, yeah. I, I used to blog. And then, like, my blogging would be, like, 3 a.m. Like, I feel depressed and I write. And then, every time... After I write, I feel better. So it was, it was an outlet, yeah, even though I didn't realise it was an outlet. Um, yeah, but then, I don't know, she said that to me one day, like, you sound dumb, like, like don't put out your emotion, blah, blah, blah. And then I literally deleted everything. And now oh I try God. to go back to find it, because you want no, to find, like, I'm your... I'm so sorry that she said that to you. But at the same time, like, I shouldn't have let it. I should not have let it, but it's fine. It's a learning experience. And yeah. now, if I had learned to overcome that, then I will find myself. But it, likewise, then, in the relationship, like, like... He would tell me like, oh, you can't post this. Don't don't talk about this. Like, why why are you doing like you know like why why do you have to to share our relationship? Like, it's us, yeah. it's private. It's you know, and that actually caused us to tunnel down because then we became obsessed with this little private world that we had right. that nobody nobody knew about. But then what made it fun was that it became twisted and and then like if let's say we'll fight, then he'd be like, you don't tell anybody about this. Like, you, you tell your friends, right? Like, how dare you tell your friends? You know that kind of stuff. So then like, my world just started closing in a lot and when we finally like broke it off um it, it took me a really long time to learn how to like 
it's okay. It's okay to talk. Yeah. yeah. You know, especially since you said that it was so private, it's like if you don't tell your friends about the problems, right? And then after yes. it's over, then where do you start begin exactly. trying to yeah. find and, that And that's what's because yeah. like then you don't have you don't have the broader tapestry of perspective. Do you know what I mean? Like like you can't just get all your information from one person. You can't. Like yeah. you need and not even just that, you can't even just go out to seek friends. You need to seek advice from people that are valid. You know, like you don't go and get like love advice from a friend that is also in a toxic relationship that's going to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but these are all, and actually, like, that's why I really wanted to talk about toxic relationships because I mean, I think a lot of us are very toxic. And not not by like malicious intent, but yeah. just by accidentally, yeah, accidentally being selfish. Yeah, accidentally by insecurities, like by, yeah, you know, and, and that's totally fair. But the only way that we can kind of trespass that is to be self aware. And that's why it's taken a lot to go in and, and Deep. Like I actually wanted a tattoo like <laughs> on my lip here, like a pill that says heart, just to remind me to swallow heart pills. <laughs> like, oh. You know what I mean? Like okay, like oh my god, like, I don't want to deal with this. That's a artistic like, idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I was damn scared. <laughs> and the tattoo artist that we went to was like damn shady, so I was like nah. Well, don't do it. Like, yeah, not like, yet. Just keep it in your head. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So um, okay, but no, but yeah, like like I think it's important for a lot of girls and a lot of guys, especially young young age, because. You know, if our age at 18 years old, we started dating, that was quite young, right? I started earlier, but okay. I 14 or something. Yeah. Uh, same. <laughs> I'm a relationship whore. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know, kids like, what, 8, 9, 12, like, everybody has phones, you can get into a relationship. Like, what are they saying to each other? Do, do we know? I have no idea. Like, how does that work in their minds as they get older, you know? I mean, yeah. obviously, you can't control everything, <coughs> but I think... The same thing as awareness in every other cause, like whether it be like environment or whatever. It's like just having the thought mm-hmm. in your head changes your perspective and yeah, the way. It's true. Yeah, so like yeah, I think it's good. I think we should talk about it more. Yeah, it really affects even toxicity to friends. Like you don't realize when you're beating your friends down, and we do that a lot. Um, yeah, so it's important, guys. It's so, true. Like just passing a casual comment yes, about exactly. the way someone looks or how they're behaving yeah. and stuff. Like for example, you might like maybe maybe like. Like, some guy comes in with, like, a really nice bag or, like, a girl actually really pretty. She put makeup damn nice today. And then, you know, maybe you say a comment like, oh, like, you put... You know, like, girls do that. I don't know how to explain it, but, like, you know how to... You know, we know how to subtly put someone down if we wanted to, mm. right? And that's horrible. Yeah. It's really bad. Like, don't do not do it. And it seems strange. I, I remember I tackled th- with this a lot growing up because... It's, oh, my God, sorry, I've been talking for so long. <laughs> like, you're meant to keep talking. Okay. So the whole episode is about you <laughs> talking and you know me just trying to understand so, more about you. <laughs> is, is that weird? Sorry, I'm not coming on too strong. No, no, not at all. But yeah, please feel free to jump in anytime. What was I talking about? You were talking about like you know friends being toxic and everything, but um, okay, the, the, the 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 toxicity about like um, that that really impacted oh. you. Was it like mm. it's still relationship based, right? No, I mean, it's really, I don't think like, it's just that. But everything. I mean, that was for sure the catalyst okay. and what made everything else apparent to me because that was definitely the heaviest and the craziest of it all. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, from what I understand is that you're, you're an artist that has realised that there's so much toxicity going on in your life or rather in everyone's, in everyone's yeah, in the life. World, in the world. Yeah, and then you just want to sort of like figure out your way around it. Yeah, okay, so what I was saying was that, like, growing up, I remember always, because I'm a Libra, so I'm, like, always balancing things, right? Like, I'm like, okay, I know I want to be good. Like, in this situation, I know I can act in the right way. Eh. But then at the same time, too. <laughs> 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 at the same time, like, you know, especially when you're younger, you want to act out. You yeah. Want, you want to, like, just be like, no, like, <laughs> you know? And... And then I struggle, like, I want to be like, okay, I want to pick the good choice, like, the angel on my shoulder. I want to be the angel. But then because you see everybody doing the bad thing, you're like, okay, I guess it's okay to do this. So I'm telling you, if you have the choice, always go with the right choice. The one that you know is right in your gut. And somehow, and I don't know how to explain this probably, but somehow life will reward you. Like, when you're a good person, it comes back to you. I really believe in all that universe. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Like, I mean, religions and everything say that, but it's, it's hard to process that and internalize it on your own. But, yeah, be good. Yeah, I really agree with you. And um, I just wanted to go back to the point that, like what you said about your ex-manager saying that, you know, you're talking about your feelings mm. online, stupid and everything. I think that's really, really mean. Like, especially yeah. since, like, um, in this day and age, right, like, everyone uses social media. And I feel like more and more people are 
putting their lives online. But I think when she said that, it was like seven years ago when we first started. Right. So I, I, I don't like hate her for it. I understand no. that she was saying it because it's like a, this is a branding thing. Yeah. We want you all to come off clean and sparkly. We uh, want like the girls to only wear skirts and the guys to wear pants and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And it, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I totally get it because that works if you're okay with it. But I think we also need to be attentive to what a person needs. Yeah. Like even when you're giving advice to a friend, like don't just give advice, like figure out what they need. But I feel like there are ways that you can express emotions, even negative ones, a- in a way that doesn't come across as just being like ranting online or childish, oh, but, but rather like it's just as a, like, a cathartic release and also um, in a way presenting yourself as more human so yeah. that like other people will, will not view you as just like, you know, sparkly and perfect. Of course, yeah, yeah of, like, course, of course. Yeah. It, it's great that there's like more awareness going around oh, these days yeah, that, for sure. you know, hum- we're all like body human. Positive yeah, you know, we're not fucking stuff. perfect. I'm, I'm here for it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. I love the whole trend of like awareness and like, you know, like Jamila, is that her name? Jam- you know, do you watch The Good Place? Oh, no. Eh? It's a, it's a movie, is it? The TV series. Okay, oh, anyway. no, 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 I don't. But, like, yeah, there are like, a lot of people that I follow on Instagram that are just shaming shaming the industry which is great because it starts there it starts from the society yeah just like having like awareness about the social issues that we have yeah yeah so um how about like in your album are there like any specific songs that um, relate to certain stories that you might want to share with us Mm, i think maybe like family, if, if not just relationship, maybe yeah, any inspired by family. We all know you've got a very famous brother also. <laughs> the other good-looking king. <laughs> oh my god, just like yesterday, with, you know the Snapchat filter? Yeah, I like, saw! Hilarious! I died, eh. Like, I screamed. Like, when, when, when I was just like swiping through and I screamed and it came yeah. so I was like, oh my god, that, that really looks like Ben. Yeah. And I thought that it really looked like Ben and then Ben did the one of me. Oh my and god. And I was like, it's re- yeah, I really like the part where he just stuck his tongue out. It's such a girl thing to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, I mean in the album, it's it's quite an inward album. It's a retrospective, yeah, album. So for example, like, um, it, in so this this out of my head is part of like the first part of the album. That's where I really address like all the toxicity and the anger because I think when you have, I mean the first reaction to things, at least my first reaction think is is anger. I used to be a very angry person. Okay. Like actually now that I'm not angry anymore, I'm like, whoa, who's this? But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like you my, me. <laughs> so so to me like the anger was purple. Part one is purple and that's why like a a lot of the visuals are purple because that's like a it's like a fire but it's a slow burner. It's a bit sinister. And that's how I feel about all these emotions that I have. And at the same time it makes me feel strong. Because sometimes you can you can tap onto to traumas and, and, and like anger if you use it right. If that makes sense. Let me repeat myself. <laughs> when you, I think when when you when you gone through something, mm-hmm. right? For example, for me, it's a toxic relationship. Yeah. I learned how to take all of those mistakes and the things that I learned and all the hurt that I felt and channel it in a good way. Because you can't deny that these things happen to yeah. you, and denying it causes more problems. So yeah. part one was about me twisting that into something powerful, and then. Um, I realized like when I was writing like a couple of the other songs fell into this what I call the second part like part mm-hmm. two which is blue where it talks about um, when you remove the anger and, and then you're just left with hurt then you're lost because you don't know how to move on but at the same time you can't be angry because you realize you're hurting the people around you yeah. what are you? you're sad right? Yeah. so part two for me was like a lot of songs about me just recognizing that in myself like owning the fact that I'm maybe I'm a little bit neurotic, a little bit cynical, or like I'm depressed, you know, like it's a clinical thing. And I know that I felt it since young and denying it for a long time really harmed me. And then after that, when I found out like, or oh, whatever, like properly diagnosed, I, I used an excuse. I was like, okay, what, you know what, if I'm depressed, I'm not going to leave my bed. So I didn't leave my bed for like two months, you know, that kind of thing. And I couldn't get out of the house. Like it was really horrible. But then the song, I saw, it's called Blue, is about me accepting the fact that I'm sad and then I move on to part three which is where I'm like eh, you know like life sucks I'm not <laughs> over it I'm like annoyed and I'm a bit sarcastic but we're gonna move on yeah so that's that's the reason why I'm like quite excited to take people through the journey and like yeah have them listen to songs it's so annoying that like only one song is out because I'm like I'm past it guys don't worry but like oh. you know I want to sh- I want to be able to show them the rest of it but yeah I mean in due time 
So patience. we'll be looking forward to that then. Yeah, I hope it's good. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited to put it out. I really agree with what you said about like, you know, if you are dealing with stuff, you cannot deny that you are feeling this way. Mm. Because if you try to bury the emotions, then it just becomes a deeper rooted problem that in the future you have to deal with. Mm. Yeah. Then I feel like, you know, depression is something that uh, um, most people would sometimes feel, um, even if you don't have depression at certain points in your life, right, you might have depressive symptoms oh, of like sure. not wanting to leave your bed, yeah. like just feeling like you have no interest in your usual activities. Mm. And, just and like, it's uh, way more common nowadays. It and is it's super, completely yeah. understandable yeah. because of the society that we live in. It's just... <sighs> I'm, I'm just happy that there's another voice out there for people to relate to and like for mm. them to feel like it's okay to, yeah. to go through these things. It's 100%. a phase, you know. Yeah. Don't let it consume your entire and life. And also teaching them how to recognise it and address yeah. your own problems. Yes, that is yeah. so important. Yeah. You know, people sometimes they feel a certain way and then they don't know why they feel that way and they just keep blaming themselves or other people around them and mm. then that is also That's the toxic behaviour that you speak kind of. of. Yeah. yeah. So having song um, and songs and artists in the, um, who are able to like shed some pers- share some perspective mm. on how to deal with it or how to even recognise it yeah. is really important. Uh. I, I hope I can help because like I used to think, okay, when I when I've overcome this, I will talk about it. When I've overcome this, I will talk about it. Then I realised that you don't. It's an ongoing, it's an ongoing thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and then I thought I had to have this like perfectly structured essay on like how to deal with depression. <laughs> but then I realised like, if, yeah, I mean like me dealing it and the process of me dealing it is also something that helps yeah. people. It, it's true, yeah. yeah. I, I, I love that while you're dealing with it, you haven't totally figured it out and you're not no, trying to tell oh. people that you got it figured out, but no. this is me in this attempting. state. Yeah, and attempting <laughs> and, you know, that that in itself really speaks to people uh, because well, all of us are going through something or another, right? Yeah. Like, no one's got that life totally figured out. Yeah. What gets you out of a funk? Me? Yeah. Um, I have my moments and, like, my weeks where I just feel like shit and I, I don't leave the bed too yeah. or, like, um... I think just remembering the things that I have to be grateful for, oh, yes. conscious conscious reminders to myself. Like, of course, there's, like, you know, personal problems, there's a lot of things sometimes that get me very frustrated and angry at myself and people, yeah. like, you know, why like this? Like, because um, my parents are, like, separated since young and I had to go mm. through a lot of, like, childhood trauma. ACOD, so, Adult Children of Divorce. Yes! Oh my god, we are survivors! <laughs> like, Mine's deaf, Adult Children of Death. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's so hard because yeah. you don't have, like, a good base to form love, yes. like to understand love, to go home and feel like you find someone. That's why I'm a, I'm a relationship whore. Oh my god, it was, yeah, same. It was finding love in someone that someone would accept you and I know I can run to you and you will be there for me and I needed that so badly as yeah. a kid. And also it's like a conscious choice for them to stay. It's not like, yes. you know, your family no, in a way is obligated. But that's why it becomes toxic because like the more you get them to stay no matter how trash you're being like yeah. and they still stay means oh you love me more ah yeah 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 oh Shit. my god <laughs> yeah i definitely so, had that pattern too yeah i f- i feel like p oh she did at least it wasn't on me <laughs> are you sniffing your own pee <laughs> yeah, we'll deal with that later yeah we'll deal with that later like, when did she get we? down to pee I, I don't know i was so, like engrossed in what you were saying I'm just trying to make sure that the pee is only there. Okay, we good, we good. Yeah? Do we okay. want to like dab it or something? Is that tissue in it? Okay. <laughs> they say no. We will sit on bed with pee. But, um, you know, is that something that you've talked about before in public? Like, um, you know, family history and how that affects you being who you are currently? I mean, it's interesting because our family is quite in the spotlight. You yeah. know, we do, I mean, we do like... So, I don't think we've ever really gone into it. But, I mean... I think when we when we talk about it, we're very clear to, to reassure that we're not a perfect family. Yeah, no, but yeah. but in my family, I'm very fortunate because they really do love us a lot, and and there's a lot of love that goes on in the household. It's just not being able to express it. I think that's also something that a lot of families a- in Asians Singapore are, are, are unable yeah. to do. It and that bleeds. Like for example, like when my mom passed away, there was a lot of there was a huge rift that went through the family, but. Nobody actually knew how to address it. So my dad's solution was, okay, send them to therapy. But then, like, as a kid, you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't want to go to the therapy. therapist. Like, yeah. I don't know how. So we went for one session. I was like, no, I'm not doing this. So, And then eventually, you just go on to assume that you're fine. But every and, and everyone was dealing with it badly, but dealing with it on their own. Yeah. And at a point in time, I was like nine. So I didn't know how to deal with it. Like, I literally, I would go to bed thinking like, 
okay, the longest I've been away from my mom was five days, so I can make it five days. So I'm going to make it five days. And then after that, I'll just take it day by day. And it was, it was weird because then you start, I don't know, like, I know, I know I would get so jealous of, like, friends, parents who would come to, like, the competitions and we'll be swimming and then they'll be sitting there, you know, the whole time and I'll be like, how are you treating them so badly? How are you not, like, saying hi or hugging them? Like, they're right there. They're there for you, you know? I mean, I can relate because, I mean, my, I, my dad has not been in my life since I was, mm-hmm. like, four. And I, like, I haven't had parental love from the, the father's side, basically. Yeah, okay, he's probably, if he ever sees this video, he's going to kill me because he's very, I mean, like, But it's so, yeah, that's so <laughs> irritating about Chinese families. Like, you can't tell people your problems and all that. Yeah, but, yeah. And, um, yeah, I get jealous, too, of people who have loving families. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, um, recently, I started the question, like, whether, um, whether I will ever fully heal because mm. I feel like neurologically, I'm different. Like, there's, Why? because there's so much trauma that happened when I was a child, right? That mm. I feel like my perception of happiness is, like, different from a normal person who has grown up with a proper childhood. Yeah. And, like, I have this deep-rooted fear of abandonment because, like, my dad left when I was oh, super yes. young. So, no matter how much somebody loves me, I always feel like, like, one day they're going to leave. Yeah. But it's good that you know, like, knowing is, is power. Like, my friend said this to me and I, and I really hold on to it. It says, like, we're too old to let our childhood traumas be our adult problems. Oh, shit. Fucking real. <laughs> <laughs> I just said fuck. I yeah, said no, 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 like, you know, <laughs> fuck it. Because, yeah. like, no matter how old you get, right, these memories, they're still in, like, in your brain. Of and course. I feel like, you know, if I didn't have all of that, I'll probably be a much different person now. Yeah, but like, at the same time, like, the, the, the good thing is, I mean, you see... I guess a lot of the older generation and, and they also have had all these traumas because their parents were worse. <laughs> like, honestly, yeah. like, they didn't care about them at all. I mean, that was just the way that it was. They had, like, so many kids. So they grew up with these things. But the best thing about being in our generation is being exposed to the internet, being exposed to, like, a lot of, like, like woke, I guess the woke phase, the mindfulness phase. But these are things that actually help us overcome it. And I realised, like, yeah, man, I, I, f- I feel you so hard. And it's so easy. Like, oh, my God, I was reading this article on, like, seven... Seven something that a daughter, like an unloved daughter, goes through, and I was like, oh, so lame. Thought catalog, click, <laughs> boom, like I was crying at by like number four, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh my god, and and oh, but but after after reading something like that, like you realize, adult children of divorce is so common nowadays, yeah, like, and Especially everybody in struggles. Singapore. But that means right that you have a huge community of people that totally understand and and also process the things the way you do. So you're not alone, for sure. But yeah, like, swallow the hard pill. Like, that's the scary part. It's like you know, like I know that I have a tendency to run to someone for love, and that's why now like in the relationship that I'm in, I'm so aware of trying to make sure that I'm there for you because I want you to grow, and I'm and I'm I'm here to nurture and encourage you. But at the same time. I'm walking on my own feet. I will let you help me and I will let you be a part of my life and I will enjoy all these things that we do but it's my, it's my fight. It's my walk. It's your choice. Yeah. Re- realizing that is, is something you have to do again and again and again and again yeah, and again. it's and true, again. it's true. Oh my God, yeah. Because at one point I felt that exactly the same way and then I, after that I start slipping into bad habits again mm. and I'm like, eh, haven't I been here before? Exactly. Yeah, why am I still here? But the moment again? you catch yourself, then you're like, oh, that's better than, than it was last time because last time you uh, didn't catch yes. yourself. Yeah. So progress yes. is important and for people to, you know, just realise that they're human and this shit may or may, or may not keep happening but it would be better yeah, and you would be more conscious and aware of how. Like, like things that really helped me was just, I guess, opening my, like broadening my perspective with, like whether it's things like reading like reading philosophy, reading astrology. Are you into astrology? Right? No. What's your horoscope? I'm a Virgo. <gasps> yeah. I'm a Virgo Libra cusp. <laughs> what does that mean? It means I'm I'm on the I'm between Virgo and Libra. But oh, I'm more Libra okay. than I am Virgo. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but but it's quite interesting. Actually you just try and dabble like for fun, go and read it because if even if it's not an exact science, it's a good infrastructure of human behaviour. Right. And like like I did like my full chart, like I did a numerology report and all this like stupid nonsense just to explore. Like, I mean, I grew up in a Christian family, but then, like, now I'm really starting to explore other religions, starting to explore into history, because I think what we need as humans is not, I, my, I always want to say, I, I chase happiness. My life mm-hmm. is about chasing happiness. I don't care about anything else. I just want to be happy. Then I read this article that was like, humans don't need happiness. We need purpose. 
it's not that's where we find meaning because you need to feel like you're contributing to something in the world because that's what we're here for if even if you're isolated and you're happy what what is that it means nothing right you I can't you can't actually be happy because yeah, i don't know you know what purpose are purpose or not <laughs> justin bieber 2016. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like we are we feel that way because when we grew up as kids happiness was the number one thing that we lacked mm. and then as adults we feel like you know we're adults now we're in charge of our lives now is the time for us to go and get it mm. but you know it's not just as simple as okay you know today i choose i choose to be happy that means i am uh. but it can be i think you think it's, i think it's all about perspective like and i know it sounds so tacky and a lot of people will be like oh lame but like meditation seriously because you can go in like you could go into a really tough day being like oh i'm exhausted i don't like my job like i'm stressed yeah. i don't know how this person is going to react what they're going to say i have this tension with someone or you can go in being like okay today is a tough day but i'm going to grow from this i'm going to try and fix the relationship as best as i can and i know that i will do my best and be the per- best person that i can be and that's all i can do and then whatever happens it's okay because you try your best and and even if the situation goes badly you learn from it and you grow which is something i'm still <laughs> not like i'm preaching i'm still learning how to do mm-hmm. but i do realize that it makes a huge difference it really makes a huge difference like setting yourself in the right mindset and, and it just like you know stupid things like talk to the mirror <laughs> you are a good you <laughs> like you know, do whatever you need to say but yeah constant reminded affirmation like there's this sorry if I'm going too much into all this nonsense, but like there's this um, phil- science, pseudo-scientist called something Ye- Emoto, some Japanese guy who did a mm-hmm. test on water. So the first thing he did was he went to like um, get holy water and then water from a drain and he froze it into crystals, right? Okay. The water from the holy water turned into these beautiful, like imagine like snowflake white, like blue kind of, kind of crystals. And then after that, the other one turned into like this brown hash, like, like glass crack kind of mush. Yeah. So then after that, he... What did he do? He played music to the water. So he would play like Amazing Grace or like Edelweiss to, to water and same, same, same batch, right? And then he would play, for example, like Metallica or like I Hate You, like blah, 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 like really harsh music. And same thing happened. The, the positive crystals formed in like nice blah, blah, and then the other one was like crack. And then after that, he put the water in jars and he wrote words on them, like, love you, thank you. And the, on the other one, he wrote like, shit, lousy, like uh, all that kind of stuff. And the same thing happened. So, I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, that's, that's nonsense. But I like to believe in energy. Like there's so much in this world that we do not understand. Mm. You know, like their patterns, I mean, like fractal geometry, like everything in this, there's so much like, God sent, like, what's his face? Uh, What's his face? <laughs> the very famous scientist. Um, the, the black guy. What's his name? Okay, anyway. Anybody? He said... No. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. Huh? Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. I'm going to pretend I know who that is. At the bottom of... At the bottom of science is God. And I thought that was insane. Because I think... Like when you first started like learning about science, you think, okay, God doesn't... It's not real because Big Bang Theory and all that kind of stuff. But once you gone through enough science to dig, you realise that there's no way that we could have been formed without some kind of higher power or some kind of like mathematical power. I don't know if I'm religious anymore, but I, I like to keep an open mind and I still am researching to see what I really truly believe in. Mm-hmm. And I, lo- I kind of lost my train. Oh, but, the, but I mean, at the basis of every single religion, right, it's always about good, being a good person. Yeah. Being mindful, being respectful. That's how it starts, la, at least. So, I mean, those are the simple things that we can practice even if we don't know if we follow a one religion, you know? Yeah. Uh, went off. <laughs> no, I think it's great that you're sharing with us so much, and mm. I can see like why you're an artist because, <laughs> like, you have so like so much thoughts in your head and so much like things to share, your ideas uh. and, and, and like analogies, and even just your experiences with life. Mm. Yeah, you. I feel like you're a soul that really needs to like channel all these into you know, like, something. Into something. Into yeah, something. because <laughs> like if not, it's just so much energy. Yeah, I like, just thought here. Yeah. I know. I got so constipated when I couldn't like express <laughs> really like I, th- I like I like I wrote it in this like press release like like constipated diarrhea and they're like can you take out constipated and diarrhea but I'm like it really feels like constipated and diarrhea like when I was when I couldn't write and when I finally wrote I was like <laughs> 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 so what you're listening to is my shit <laughs> <Sorry>. literally <laughs> uh, and it sounds so horrible but yeah what's your outlet 
my outlet is listening to music. Mm. So isn't it great that you like making yes. music and listening to music? Because like growing up, I didn't really have much. Yeah, like, I didn't really have a lot of friends. Didn't really have family. Like as a kid, without friends and family, what do you have, right? It's yeah. not like you have purpose. You just like you just like you're not, you're not even, even given. You're not even given purpose because exactly. like parents like to take that away from yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, like purpose is like to go to school and get high, but good grades lah. But like um like I wasn't a yeah so I was not academically like strong or anything. Mm. Not saying I'm stupid, but I just didn't have any like it's interest. Just, yeah. So I just um. My outlet was music because I felt like that's one thing that people couldn't take away from me. Mm. And it's like you have a friend in your favorite artist, yes. right? Like the people that you love listening yeah. to, you feel like you know them. Mm. They don't, you don't actually know them. They don't even know that you exist. But there's that connection and that that's bond. That's the beauty of like communicating yeah. through art. So, so yeah, so like that's why like I'm I'm so interested in talking to people and finding out their stories because mm. I feel like that's how I make sense of the world. But that's great. Like it's so good that you find finally found like an outlet for you to understand yourself and when and also help other people. Yeah. Like talking to other people. Yeah. Empathizing. Empathy. Yeah, it's, it's great to like, you know, like to get real with someone because that's so rare nowadays. Mm. And not sure if like everybody cares about it as much as we do. But like, like the people who care care. Yeah. That's what you can the tell. Best part. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, it, you can change one percent at a time to let them know that it's okay to be vulnerable. Yeah. And it's just to be human la. And like, I totally understand why people don't care so because sometimes it's just hard to care about everything that is wrong in the world. It's like, how can I sit here and listen to the problems of a billion different people when I'm like and, 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 and there's so shit. much shit going on in the world, you know, like oh my god, climate change, like we're cutting down forests, like you know, like so much plastic everywhere. What do we do? The people are going extinct, like people <laughs> people exploding, like, getting their heads chopped off, yeah. like um like wow, there's so much Yeah, so much shit. Negativity in the world, like I totally understand why sometimes it's just easier to shut it out. But I mean at least there's an outlet for when they are ready. There's something to Yeah. To I see. think we can just start with ourselves and the people around us. Oh exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean that's what you should have at the very least, you know. Yeah, and don't underestimate the kind of impact that you can make just by being who you are in your life. Like, it really, really ripples out. Mm. Yeah, I, th- I think it's great, really. Yeah, that, likewise. That, you know, we care enough and yeah. I feel like, okay, to the people who don't care, you don't care, like, okay, what ifs? What <laughs> I mean, honestly, if they're watching in 40 minutes in, they care. Yeah, <laughs> so, so the people who are still here. I yes. think you're fine. Yeah. I think How sometimes, are you doing? Yeah. How's your life? Oh <laughs> yeah, you can leave. I like, can leave comment. Are you gonna like reply them? <laughs> yeah, can I? Of course. Yeah, I think that would be great. Oh my actually. god, I'm so bad. I realized like, I have no idea how a lot of these social media YouTube things work. Like, okay, anyway, that's a different thing. But I will, I will learn how to do stuff like this. And then I've, I, I read some of your like um, late night talk posts, and I think that you know if it if it makes you feel better, you should continue doing them. But mm. at the same time, of course, also because you're a public figure, just keep in mind that you know some things can be phrased like. Yeah. In a way where it gives people information but not paint yourself in a light where people can use your own words against you. I mean, like if they do that, then fuck you. Like, <laughs> yeah, then no, fuck sorry, them. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say because I'm just being honest. I think for me, the what stops me though is like, is the duality within me. Like, at night, I will feel one. Like, I always see myself, I have like the negative morale and I have like the happy, cheerful, like cheeky, fun loving one, mm-hmm. right? But they both hate each other. They really hate each other. Like, when I'm, like, depressed at night and I, like, write these things, I'm like, yes, I love you, this, ooh. And then I'm like, like, screw you for not being able to, like, express yourself. Look at me, I'm free. And then after that, the next morning, I wake up and I'm like, fuck you, you stupid-ass <laughs> bitch. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, but, okay, la, like, recognising that and, like, trying to... They're both you. They're both yeah. you. Actually, what helped me out of, like, my really depressive funk, right, which, like, was, like, realising that that me who's negative, who's upset, who's angry, who feels like there's a veil, black veil, like, coasting through the world and all I can see is everything bad about it, right? That's not me. Like, if you're feeling that way, right? Like, that's not you. I don't even know how to express it better, but it really is just not you. You must take that version and put it aside and, like, figure out who is underneath that. It's and it's okay to be that way sometimes, yeah. but, like, it doesn't take up your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way, like knowing how to compartmentalize mm. your negative emotions yeah. and just accepting it as, okay, it's, it, it sometimes it's a part of who I am, but mm. it is not entirely who I am. And yeah. I'm not going to base like my worth on the days that I'm shit. Yes, Because there exactly. are days that I'm fucking awesome. Yes. And you got to own that. Preach that <laughs> shit. Yeah, mama. 
But yeah, hey, I just you know, like seriously, I know I'm going to be like sound crazy, but go ahead and try and read your your astrological chart. Okay, you gotta, I can you, like share, like, you know, your links and like stuff okay, yeah, with yeah, me. Okay, like, go, like, go download like, CoStar. It's a very intro app. Um, that you just put in like your birth time and everything, and they'll tell you. Like for example, right, you have a Virgos. Virgos are quite like a perfectionist, and you're also a bit hesitant. Like yeah. so, you you don't like to like dive straight into things. You would like like to have your cards ready and make sure mm-hmm. that. But then at the same time, like, she she she's a fortune teller <laughs> now. But at the same time, like when it doesn't go right, you go like you get really mad. Yeah, I yeah. get so upset. I get so triggered by the smallest things. Yeah. I try not to show it. Yeah, but I'm so yeah, triggered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, because you also like to put on that. So yeah. so your astrological chart is really broken down into like your sun, your moon. For example, your sun is, is Virgo, but then your moon will be like the shadow or your emotions where you hide things. And then you have a mask. And all these are in different zodiacs. So they split down. After that, it goes into Mercury, which is like communication. You have your Venus, which is love. Mars, which is aggression. And, and they'll tell you how you manage all these aspects in your life. And knowing that, really helps you just be like, oh, now I'm angry and I'm acting this way because blah, blah, blah. So just don't be. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it, it really, really works. Like, I'm really happy that it works for you. I feel like, you know, different people have different things that work for them. Yeah, for some no, people, course, it's religion. Yeah. Some yes, people, yes, it's yes, astrology. Yes, exactly. As long as it helps you make sense of the world. Oh, yes. And, like, it's bringing positivity. Yeah. And, like, power be to it. Are you religious? Uh, no. Okay. And, but I don't, like, I used to be an atheist. Okay. But, like, now I'm starting to feel like I don't know what to think. Because, like, what you said, there's so much energy in the world. So many mm. things that we can't explain. And It's yeah. fun, la. The process is fun. Yeah. I think, really, life is just a process. And it's just about enjoying everything like don't hate yourself for all the things that you can't do don't mm-hmm. like that's the best thing is like okay for example you could be pampered and live a great life but then you'll never know what it means to work hard and fight for what you want oh so, my god yeah that's yeah. actually like what i tell myself all the time you know yeah. like sometimes i'm borderline grateful for having like the tough childhood yes if not i don't know whether i would just be like uh, and you're empathetic now you understand the plot you you understand emotion you know what it's like to not be loved and that makes you want to love people more like like these bad things that happen to you in your life like it's a blessing trust me and the only way it becomes a blessing is if you approach it in the right manner and also with a good heart la. and have fun like and really just enjoy the process i like that's that's what i'm really working on now is opening myself up right like whether it's talking to people or yeah. or creatively allowing myself to flow so that my chakras are aligned <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but also just what was i saying chakras a little before that uh let let everything align in your life After like that, creativity before that. before that something like you i was there like you just go back and listen <laughs> Basically, what Narelle is trying to tell you is to love your growing process. Yes. And that, you know, she, like, and listen to her music beautiful. when it's out. Yeah, we're and you are beautiful people. Like, don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Because we, everything that we've learned in this life, right, we learn, every, sorry, everything that we know from when you're a baby, every single thing that you know, you learn. Eh? Don't tell me that that is not an amazing feat. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how is that not an incredible feat? Like, I don't understand. Yeah. So, yeah, like, and everyone grows at their own pace and everyone will have their moment to shine. Like, even if you feel like you're not doing well enough now, maybe you're just not ready. And maybe you're, a bigger house needs more bricks. If you're building a big house, be patient, you know? Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't rush yourself. And enjoy the process. It's so fun. Like, the, the end goal is nowhere near as fun as the journey. Yeah. In fact, um, you know, what you said about everything you learn as a baby, I... I feel like, you know, people learn how to be negative from someone of or course, somewhere. Yeah. So Which means you can also unlearn. Yeah. And you can learn other things. Yeah. And 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 oh sorry, no, I'm just kidding, but like really look look into your own thoughts. Like what you tell yourself is what you listen to all the time. Is what you're channeling your your wa- the water in your body to. Okay, like that's a bit far fetched, but you know what I mean? Like you're channeling <laughs> the energy into your own body. If you tell yourself, I suck, and that's what I used to do. Like I realized how hateful my thoughts were. I was like, everything I do would be like, you're stupid, you suck, shut the fuck up. Like, like why, why are you even here? Like die, 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 die. And, uh, no, fire. but yeah, like, you know, really write, write these things down and remind yourself every single day. Do that. Like, re- say the good things that maybe today I'm strong, today yes. I grew, today I, I, I was kind. Right? And, and repeat that consistently to yourself and you realise that it manifests and it flowers. And say it to your friends, yeah. tell your family. You know it's hard to go to your parents. Like for us, it's so weird to go like, hey, daddy, love you. And give them a hug. I, right? I do that with my mama because I only um, have my mom left. Yeah, okay. But maybe like some friends also, it's like sometimes a bit like, oh, okay, hey. But you, sometimes you want to express more but you don't know how. Like just, just do it. Lah. Don't worry about being lame or ashamed and all that stuff. Yeah. Real talk. 
Thanks thank so much you. for being on this episode. Thank you for yeah. having me. And I think I'm going to have to check out astrology because of her. Yes. <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Pillow Talk with Narelle. Um, let us know what you think about what she said. And if you like this episode, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And also let us know who you want to see in the next one.